Ruler School is brought to you by Odyssey Games, where you can go to get singles for all your Force of Will and other trading card games, as well as these amazing patrons. Thank you for your support. Enjoy the video. Hey there, Rulers. DMO73 here, bringing you another feature match for the week. Trying to get back on schedule after going through the Forceful Festival. You have myself playing the Greedy Mimi Aggro, as designed by Dustin Jones, and to get to a ninth place finish at the festival. And I'm playing against Paul Clute, who's playing his take on the updated Adam Graveyard Aggro. Um, this was shown in. Um, a different variation by Toby Gaffney at the festival. Unfortunately, Paul does not have the um, Majin subjugations that are utilized in this list quite consistently um, to help bring out Alice at a pretty high rate of speed. But what you're going to see is, is this kind of updated take on the harvesting aggro style, the aggro style, not the control harvesting Adam that we've seen before of just milling to the grave and slamming as much damage as possible with reanimate spell, with command of life and death, with Alice, with dark Alice, all of those kinds of pieces to just push through and finish off your opponent as fast as possible. So we're going into a nice aggressive uh, mirror here. The Greedy Mimi deck is green, black, red. It is very, very greedy and very, very dependent on the Adaraktia, um addition. So we'll just kind of have to see how this goes. Adam, um, the Adam deck is going to be on the draw. Which is good for it, especially if it hits that turn one, um, you know, if it has Dark Alice on the upkeep, um, to be able to flash it in turn one and immediately kind of start turning things on. Ultimately, it does have some new packages in the rune deck um, from uh, Decisive Battle of Valhalla that gave it a little bit more consistency, uh, and you're going to kind of see that as we go into this match. So right off the bat... As soon as we finish resolving Mulligans here, the Greedy deck is going to then just use, um, as most green decks are going to do, just a turn one explore the unknown. Um, it's pretty much a standard. It's free. Um, it gets just to dig a little bit further. It gets us to kind of shape our hand a little bit better. Um, I think, unfortunately, in this time, I ship away two Adaraktias just off the bat, um, seeing a basic winst either... No, it's a Null Stone off the top, which is definitely not what the deck likes to see. Ultimately, really wants to see a turn one green so that we can play something like Shiva's Acolyte and then immediately have access to green red. Paul hitting that Blackstone as well. We're seeing the harvesting season come down here, mill 10. Um, most likely going to see a pretty traditional start there. You see, yeah, he does have the Valkyries chosen. So in the same vein that we're going to see um, previous harvesting aggro decks with Adam play, um, we're going to uh, get to uh, reanimate it and hit me for eight. Um, this is the other kind of take. The previous is harvesting uh, aggro decks didn't really care about playing Adam or um, Brunhild. You could really play both variations. It really didn't matter. This time, um, it does matter a lot because you're utilizing the three drop Alice, Dark Alice, and you have the Adam Resonator to be able to make all your stones five color, be able to have the Alice Resonator be just as effective as possible. So this is just kind of the next evolution. Um, up the deck. Unfortunately, seeing a second Null Stone for the Greedy deck, no green is really bad, especially in an aggro deck mirror um, where, like, not being able to play cards is just particularly bad. I can't even, like, flash in um, a Viola or anything else if I had anything like that. Just completely locked out. Paul using his Energize here to play the Dark Alice. Baiting on if I want to do anything in response to the effect of the Dark Alice. Um, kind of not doing it the right way here. Um, I don't really necessarily, it, my thought is that if I do it, try to do it now to try to lock him out of having five colors before he discards an Adam Resonator to the grave or, or what I'm going to do there. Um, because I don't really want him to have access to white and blue um, or anything else like that. Uh, he does, you see he has two will up anyways, so if he has command of life and death, this really doesn't matter. So ultimately this is kind of a misplay on my side, but in response to the Dark Alice effect, we're going to go ahead and pay ourselves two life, go down to 3,000 um, to play a Heaven Sundering Dragon Palm, which we're going to then try to kill the Dark Alice before its effect resolves. Power of Immortality um, gets to come back, uh, go to grave, come back, re-trigger. So now Paul is going to get to draw four cards and discard four cards. Um, 
which is not great. Uh, it's a pretty suboptimal thing, and there you see the Adam that was there, but at least at this point in time, he's down to only one will. It is perfect will at this point in time, but the thought being that by doing this, knowing that that was possible, I at least shut him off from a command of life and death, uh, hopefully for the sake of not reviving that Alice uh, and potentially being able to put something better on the field on my turn. Um, unfortunately, uh, unless you're a control deck or a blue bounce deck, um, you don't really have much to be able to deal with that Alice once she hits the board. Um, as with Eternal, uh, there are just some matchups where you, that deck just absolutely loses. Um, taking the damage here, going down to 24. And so the thought being, if I can keep him off of it as much as possible, you see he has that command of life and death in hand. So that means next turn that Alice is going to come swinging in. And it is bad news um, for the greedy deck 100% at that point. Choosing to use his last will for the turn to do Look of Corruption. See, I have those two Adaractias, which would be really great if I had had green the previous turn. Um, but unfortunately, no such luck. Um, and so that's just, or green at all. So he's just going to make me discard the Shiva's Acolyte, keeping me off. I do see a green stone here, so burn myself two, go down to 22. Use the Adaractia to burn myself, to produce green, burn myself two, go down to 2,000, play an Adaractia, have Eagle Me, choose not to have Swiftness, but mostly this is just ramp, and the hope being that I don't just die next turn, um, so that I can then start putting a lot of pressure on and potentially even OTK him with the, um, Chimimi that's in my hand, uh, and also having access to Nature's Beauty in the rune deck. Paul's turn here, calling that third stone. Looking really heavily at that uh, Command of Life and Death, especially seeing the Allison Graveyard here. It's probably a pretty safe bet to just slam it. I am tapped out. Um, so even though I'll have a ton of will against him next turn, it's probably the safe bet because I'll also get to gain life. Um, shows uses to try to reanimate the um, Alice comes back in. It has all of those effects. Uh, swings in the air, takes me down to 10. Gains him up to 50. And then Paul, knowing that I have the Berserker in hand, choosing to um, not swing with the, um, choosing to not swing with the Valkyries Chosen. So paying life here to play the, trying to figure out exactly how to play it. If I had a single copy of a um, resonator that could, um, another Tremimi here, there's actually a way that I could potentially deal five grand of damage here, um, but it is very tricky. Thankfully, we're playing this um, Athenia, being the idea of we can try to at least maybe remove um, those abilities and try to at least wipe the board. Um, down comes that um, about to play the Berserker Chimimi here. A little transition was because our table got knocked a little bit. So the Berserker Chimimi is in play at this point. Um, Paying one more to play Nature's Beauty. This will force him to be able to force force Paul to block as I see fit. Swinging in seven, forcing the Dark Alice to block. Dark Alice is killed. Swinging in with the Chimimi, forcing the Valkyries Chosen to block. Using Power of Immortality on the Chimimi to pump it up so it will trade. And then gets to come back in. The Berserker Chimimi then gets to recover. Comes in and play tapped. 
paying a black to remove the whole graveyard because at this point in time, um, the Dark Alice isn't there, so I can use Athenia. Swinging into the Alice, who is just a generic 8-8, banishing the Eagle Me to pump it up so that it's going to be an 11-11, or sorry, an 11-13, uh, and then it'll recover, then I can swing in his face for 11 and take him down to 39. Um, if I played that a little bit differently, I probably could potentially have just done 5,000 damage to face, but I didn't quite see the play line there in terms of the aggression. Ultimately, though, a really cool turn, but doesn't really mean anything when Paul can just go pay for life, go grab an Estema, play Estema, and then kill me, which he's going to do here. So at that point in time, we just I see the Estema, and I'm like, oh yeah, cool, you just kill me. And then we move on to game two. As we go into the next game, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so you're notified when all of our videos goes live, and consider supporting the channel by being a member here on YouTube or by checking it out on Patreon for all the cool exclusive perks that come with supporting us. Thank you guys so much, let's go to the next game. So choosing to go on the play here again, a little bit of a mistake, I think. Having played this deck a little bit, you really actually like being on the draw of uh, this deck so that you always have access to green turn one if you need it. And the idea of being able to do potentially turn one on Arathia is very strong. Um, but this is just kind of I'm still trying to kind of figure out the deck a little bit and um, make sense of it. Hopefully not backfiring against me on this game. Um, yeah, being able to always have that turn one green uh, and potentially hitting Null Stone and being able to burn yourself too, playing out Arachia, still play a one drop that has swiftness and get in for the aggression is just very good. Like there, you see I have the Null Darkness Stone at the top, so if I had been going uh, second, um, I could have potentially played that. We see the Athenia, which has proven well for me last game in terms of at least a little bit of being able to reestablish. Uh, and then we'll burn ourselves to play a Majin Dark Elf, so at least we have a turn one aggression play and swing in for six, taking Paul down to four, or 34. Second white stone off the top, meaning no harvesting season, and he chose not to use Dark Alice during the upkeep. Maybe he didn't have it or anything else. You see, it looks like his hand is a lot of... He does have a Dark Alice there in hand. He's not to use it during the uh, upkeep, which is a little bit um, interesting. Call stone. Uh, seeing a green stone here, burning ourselves too. Out comes the Adaractia. With on 34, we can use the Adaractia immediately, thankfully, to play Eagle Me. And then we start going in, hitting for six, and then another uh, three, taking him down to 25. So this is the kind of strong, aggressive start the deck wants. It doesn't want to let um, the other deck really get much in terms of uh, opportunities to play anything. Uh, Paul choosing to use the stone here as opposed to the uh, energized, maybe just so he could have a potential turn to... Um, if he gets an Adam Slightcart turn to Alice to help him kind of reestablish. Um, dropping that Valkyrie's Chosen, which is a great way, um, great new concept that the deck didn't have before as a solid, cheap, um, progressive tool for discard that lets you get those Valkyrie's Chosen out of hand to be able to potentially reanimate them. Using that Null Darkness Stone for a Harvesting Season, again, another way to get Alice, Adam to the grave very, very quickly. Um, does not see it off the top there, so still locked out at this point in time, only on white stones. He can at least grab the Valkyrie's Chosen with Einherjar's Summon, um, but as he didn't sacrifice the stone or anything, you see there's a spell in addition to Resonator, but he didn't lose the stone to the Dark Alice, so um, he's locked out there. Now, if he had another one in hand, he could always um, burn the Energize to flash in the Dark Alice, lose the Null Stone, and turn it all on, but ultimately just choosing to use the Einherjar Summon to bring in the Valkyrie's Chosen um, and you're going to see some sequencing, er sequencing errors here that I'll kind of talk about. That's really important. So he goes to swing at the, with the 8-8 eight eight into the Valkyrie, into the 6-6. Six six. I'll banish Eagle Me to make it into being a 10-10, so I'll win the trade. Uh, and he goes to pay two life to try to remove Dark Fiery Vengeance from the graveyard, um, but to try to make it so that it still becomes a trade. Ultimately, though, this is the reminder that if you have Dark Alice on your side of the field, you can't remove any of your own cards from the grave. So you that couldn't have happened. You couldn't have paid those two life, which means he's going to instead just try to use the Valkyries chosen to swing into the Martian Dark Elf. Now, this is just an important thing to recognize that in a tournament, if that had happened, Paul probably would have just lost his own creature, um, which would have been pretty bad for him. Down comes in the Athenia because it's a free card. If it recovers us three stones, um, it will tap down. Uh, we, we have rune one, so Paul's other stone should be tapped. I don't think we catch it here. Um, I don't think we realized that he should also tap down that stone or something. Um, but 
remember if you have rune one, you harvest and corrupt, so you get to do both options. Nature's Beauty coming down here for one, just force some blocks. Majin Dark Elf's gonna swing in to try to force the Dark Atlas to block. Let's it go to Grave, chooses not to use the power of immortality or anything to turn it into a trade. At that point in time, we're gonna pass the turn. So we're sitting on multiple darkness will at this point, which is why it's really important with um, the uh, Athenia, so we can do multiple like stackings of trying to remove the graveyard just in case Paul has some kind of trick to respond to the first one. This is what we talked about in the in little solo teacher's lounge this week, is sometimes you just don't extend as far because you have to be more mindful of what the graveyard is and what potential ways your opponent can protect it. You always have to respect the graveyard and you don't necessarily want to be too proactive in removing it, lest you leave yourself open to being punished or, or just allowing your opponent to reestablish it. Paying two, playing down a sacrificial altar. And then at end of turn, we're gonna go ahead and remove the graveyard. In response, he's going to try to um, pay for life to kill the Athenia. In response to that, we're going to power of immortality the Athenia. Goes to grave, comes back, Harvard taps out his other stone and recovers my three stones. And he can float the one will at this point, and he's down to 21. So now, I've done a lot of good work there. Now, Paul, if he had had a Dark Alice in, another Dark Alice in hand here, or if he chose to do something a little bit differently, could have sacrificed in response to that Athenia trigger, trigger to recover, but before his graveyard had been removed, to um, sack his Valkyrie's Chosen for altar, sack it, go get a Dark Alice from deck, just to set that up, and then at that point in time, his graveyard would be, be tapped out at that point, and I could just then proceed to reestablish. So we're doing something a little bit different here. Um, you see me kind of pay this differently. Rather than using my stones to play for the viola in upkeep, we're going to go ahead and use uh, Adaractia on the viola, because this means that viola is now going to have swiftness. Um, so now we're swinging for a potential uh, 16 damage on the ground, um, which is really, really good. So swinging in for 10, goes down to 11, swing in for six, goes down to five. And then at that point in time, we can play um, Berserker Chimimi. And Paul's like, yeah, I can't do anything. So it scoops it up and we move on into game three. So this point in time, choosing to go on the, uh, Paul choosing to put me on the draw um, seeing if maybe something can go a little bit better this time. Um, I'm fine with that because ultimately I'm hoping to maybe be able to play the um, Adaraktia turn one this time around. Um, but just trying something a little bit different on Paul's side and seeing if it's going to stick. Turn one, we see that Darkness Stone. Um, I know he's already told me that he's going to go ahead and do Harvesting Season. Um, so we're just kind of waiting to see if he has a reanimate target and how much damage I'm going to take. It's getting rid of two Dark Alices there, which is great for me because the less he has a bat, the better. No reanimate target there. So at this point in time, he's just passing the turn and we're kind of shortcutting here. So you have Berserker Tribune come down on my side after hitting, I believe, the turn one on Araktia. Or sorry, the turn one Null Stone. Um, but ultimately not having a play to be able to capitalize on it. Having played the, ch the greedy aggro, the deck is, like I said at the beginning, very dependent on that Adaraktia just for its explosiveness. And if you don't hit it, it's pretty difficult. Um, so we're seeing a um, look of corruption here, um, debating or not how exactly I want to play this out. So Paul has one will available left. Um, in my hand, you will see a couple of sideboard cards. 
that came into play in this match. Um, and I'm kind of debating whether or not I cast one now or let him waste a um, discard spell on one of them knowing that there's a second one. Um, so I'm just gonna reveal two evil elementals in my hand. Um, it's just why I left up the green or, or the black um, to be able to potentially remove, especially after he's decided to do this harvesting season. So at this point in time, waiting to see what his other card for turn is going to be and probably going to end up just casting the evil elemental during the end of turn, just to say, let's get rid of 11 cards out of your deck um, and remove the game permanently. And tell you that I have another one just in case you try to reestablish. So hitting another Null Darkness Stone off the top. So ultimately just choosing to, uh, or sorry, no, a, a Wind Stone. So I do play the Eagle Me, leaving up Null Darkness and Energize, and choose to pass there. Calling his third stone, hitting another Mystery Counter Stone to two. Stone of Ataraktia on my side. Down comes a Sacrificial Altar, and then a uh, Demon of Fiery Vengeance. Um, before the recovery, we're going to go ahead and burn ourselves to to kill the Fallen Angel. He's going to sack it to Altar, and then we're going to he's going to pay him, himself to to try to kill it which in, instead we're going to go ahead and lorite to keep safe this is a little bit of an unnecessary lorite i think it might have been better to save that lorite for the altar potential sack um rather than worry about losing my eagle me it's just three damage and he's paying it's only going to hit him for three and he was paying two to do it so it really just like cost me one damage for him to do that effect um ultimately though it just gave me an excuse to play the lorite um because i had the seven disciples in hand uh and i wanted to hit him for as much damage as possible so a three and then hit him for a nine lifelink um, so up to 47 unfortunately though I am tapped out at this point choosing to play um, using the altar to get the dark Alice out here talked about before it's an excellent way to kind of turn some stuff on and he potentially gets access to see so he has that command of life and death in hand so we're probably going to see a um he has that atom too so he's just trying to use that to try to get adam to grave to turn on the perfect colors as well as making that command of life and death into a um alice just that much more effective so the two cards he does send there to grave are an atom and an alice uh, so having tapped out, that puts me in a bit, a bit of a pickle, uh, and that would have been the better time to, again, not establish that pressure as much, especially since I'm holding on to um, punish um, and overextending there kind of backfired. So Command of Life and Death brings back the Alice. Swings at the Seven Disciples just to kill it, um, but has the Flying and Drain, so it goes up to 30, um, back up to 36. And once again, like we said, the Eternal is a problem. Now, thankfully, I have access to Evil Elemental Uprising to be able to stop it. But at the same time, I now also have to try to deal with the fact that there is a Dark Alice on the board, which is pretty not great. Realizing that I could have banished the Eagle Me to make it so I at least save the Seven Disciples, kind of some rewinding, um, just in the sake of he was, you know, tapped out and everything else, so we tried to save it. Um, just I see Sword of the New Moon after, you know, to just go ahead and kill it anyway um, with the Energize. Or sorry, with the Mystery Counter that was on um, Adam. Paying three again. You see we have another um, seven disciples. 
swinging into the regular Alice to kick that off the board. With precision. Trying to think about whether or not he wants to use Power of Immortality on it, though. Does decide to use the Power of Immortality to try to bring it back. Um, it will go to Grave. I get to gain 9 life. And then in response to the Power of Immortality trigger, we'll use the other Evil Elemental Uprising to remove it. Um, this is going to work out better in Paul's favor because, once again, I am tapped out. Uh, he has the Alice on board that I haven't killed. And Black has a great card that is just planting beans. Um, so he can just, you'll see him use it here in a second. Invitation to Purgatory to just send an atom from deck to grave um so at that point in time he also produces two will so it's essentially free he turns back on his alice has two more will to be able to mess around with for the turn um and then um it's just in a much better spot is in a pretty good spot he can even burn one of the red if he really wants to to play um a to remove a satan from the deck which actually he has uh in his in this version of the deck So Satan is going to get removed from the game, has the one counter on it, chose to burn the red on it. because he removed Satan, also sending a Fallen Angel of Demonic Vengeance, or Fiery Vengeance, um, because Dark Alice is removed from the game, so uh, th he doesn't necessarily need to worry about having perfect color, um, but now he also has just a spot removal spell. Swings into the um, second Disciples here, takes me down, um, gets that, gains another 10 life, goes back up to 46. uses the three floating here to play a mana transmuter burns the other um floating will pays three goes down to 43 so triggers up on satan to cast a gene and then swings in for seven with that because he has access to swiftness having three bodies on board so just like that paul going from having his graveyard removed to outplaying and baiting out the graveyard removal and then immediately start re-establishing a board state that is very hard to deal with because we've got an unkillable with gene we've got an eternal with um uh the alice and then we've got Mana Transmuter to be able to get him the whatever color will he needs. Now you see his hand here is pretty bad. Uh, it's two um, Valkyries chosen. Not really much going to go on there. Um, and we can still remove the graveyard, which is nice. Um, but ultimately, we still have to try to find a way to get through all of this. And we don't have any access to any kind of swiftness, which is really unfortunate. So we need to keep all of this stuff alive this turn um, so that we can be in a position to... Um, stop the Alice as well as then start using the kind of things we've done before about nature's beauty to control the board that way. So hoping to draw into an Adoraktia here. We're playing a Mikay. I think we do see the Adoraktia here just to set up for the next turn. Unfortunately, the deck is kind of running low on cards at this point. My two cards in hand are Maja and Dark Elf, which we've already seen, and the Adoraktia. So the debate is how good even is the Adoraktia at this point. Um, Do you have some more runes? But we're running low on will, and we need to be able to remove the graveyard to try to stop the Alice from having all of her goodness. So really just debating how I want to use these last two will here. Um, choosing to paint the green. Oh, the other card in hand is an Acolyte, I think is what I grabbed instead of the Adoraktia. Because once again, knowing that I wasn't really doing anything with that anyway, um, with only those two cards in hand. Um, 
I haven't burned myself, so I can't play the Majin Dark Elf. But I need access to black. So, at that point in time, we're just gonna have to pass, unfortunately. Fallen Angel of Fiery Vengeance. Uh, it's gonna go ahead and shoot the mana transmitter for four damage in response to trying to be shot. Actually, considering the idea of playing the Satan from the remove from game area just to force some potential removal if he can get up to a grand total of four cost um, which would at this point in time wipe the board uh, because you have to pay three life to produce the red um, with mana transmuter um, it shouldn't be a five um, Stan does not see, so it's a mis miscommunication there. Null Darkness Stone will not trigger um, Stan uh, because Stan doesn't see damage. Satan doesn't see damage. It's only um, paying life. Um, so he's paying the three here. He'll be at four counters total, not five. Um, either way, it's going to wipe my board because if I banish the two one drops, I still have to banish Athena. If I banish Athena, then I only have to banish one other one. So he can just play the Stan in response to that. We're going to pump up the um we've already removed his grave so we're going to use the remaining green to pump up the um athenia and then bullet ball it to kill the alice uh just to at least get it off the board um and then we're still going to have to take the damage from both the um gene and the mana transmuter to go down to a grand total of 36. drawing for turn here so we know my cards in hand are majin dark elf and then whatever i just top decked so you can see just about how the deck kind of can struggle as the game goes long if it doesn't have that Adoraktia. It just kind of just peters out. It doesn't have a lot of draw power. Um, it runs out of steam and it just can't push through whatever your opponent is able to set up in terms of a defensive wall. That Satan is currently a 15, um, 15. So that's a lot for this deck to try to push through. Um, playing the Mosh and Dark Elf pings me down even further just to put out a blocker wall, potentially. Um, Athenia's love to force him to sacrifice a resonator. Uh, chooses to sacrifice the gene, knowing that he can just reanimate it back on his turn because of the Ein Herringar summon that he has still in his rune deck. Um, so ultimately, that didn't really do anything. Uh, and then he can just... Um, I just pass the turn. I just try to have a blocker to deal with the Stan, uh, the Satan at the end of the turn. And here your summon comes in, chooses to grab the Joan to Arc, bring her back in. She has swiftness again because it's got two other resonators. Swings in for seven, down to 27. Uh, pays two for a command of life and death. Uh, so at that point in time, the Alice's get to come back. It's still just an 8-8 because I've removed the Adam Psychart from the graveyard, and then he can just start playing cards, um, playing more and more bodies. Swings in with the Transmuter and takes me down to 21, uh, and then swings in with Stan to take me down to a grand total of 6. Um, so at this point in time, it's just formality. We know he has access, uh, that we said before in game one, um, that if he has access to freed from the altar and I'm at 10 or life or, life or less, then he can just go grab a Stemma. Um, but we're going to see the turn at least play out. Um, seeing if there's anything I can do. Athenia getting to recover a stone here. It forces him to tap out. He'll float some will in response. At that point in time, we're going to go ahead and Judgment Chamimi. Because there's no reason to not. We're going to leave up um, one Wind Stone. So now my Majin Dark Elf is very large.
And then at that point, we're kind of just resigning ourselves to defeat. Um, so we're passing the turn over to Paul uh, and letting him kind of run rampant. But this that was the match for this week. Again, huge thanks to Dustin Jones for the green list. And again, for Paul for playing against it. Deckless will be up later this week. So I'll see you next time. Class dismissed.